Hi Aquarius, welcome to your January and February 2018 Bliss Report. It's Raina here. As you can see, I already have these cards laid out. I, I actually did a 22 minute reading. Um, I, I hadn't finished it yet and I found out that this new deck that I was reading with, um, I wasn't interpreting the cards, a couple of the cards correctly. I thought these were swords and they turned out to be wands. So I decided to do it over again, which is like, ah, but that's okay. That just shows my dedication, right? And um, so I'm doing this reading using a new deck that I have called the Wild Unknown Tarot. And in addition to that, I picked a card from, actually two cards came out from the Akashic Tarot and one from the Keepers of the Light Oracle deck. So I'm just going to get right into it. The card for the overall energy, and by the way, um, the bliss report simply means I want to inspire you in whatever is going on in your life to follow your bliss. And this is my former career and money reading, prosperity readings that I was doing last year. I'm calling them bliss reports this year because it makes it more open-ended for whatever is your um, definition of bliss. So this is the overall theme of January and February and of course uh, as I record this January is almost in the can so it's, it's going to be mostly February I guess by this point but this is the seven of pentacles and in some of the cards I find it difficult to understand why, you know, why they depict the card as they do. In this one, it's it's ingenious as far as I'm concerned. And isn't this pen and ink drawing delightful? I think it is. I really enjoy these cards. I think I'm going to be using them on a regular basis, but I will not be abandoning my uh, Morgan Greer deck, which I use the most. But this is like showing an ascension and when you're talking about pentacles, we're talking about money matters and as well as career matters. And something is happening where you're seeing things progress little by little. And it's your job, Aquarius, to be able to appreciate the gradual rise and success that you are achieving. Don't get hung up on timelines here because you may not have started any kind of a personal business. I would say that if you have any desire to do so, that February is a definite great green light for that because there are no retrograde grading planets. And actually for Aquarius, you have a solar eclipse in your sign. So... If that isn't a green light from the universe, what is? You have your solar return, your new moon, which is that solar eclipse, and all systems are go. The thing about the Seven of Pentacles is showing the gradual um, rise. Okay, so some people are impatient. Some people want to go from 0 to 80 and that is not what the seven of pentacles is all about it's about patience it's about celebrating your little successes along the way not wanting to start at the top you know um, some some people are on youtube <laughs> i'm going to i'm going to go there seem to like to buy views or buy, I guess now they have to buy more than views. They have to buy comments and things like that because it looks suspicious. And they want to just, I, I was looking, I was just curious like how these things are marketed. And I saw something and they said, you know, having a lot of views gives you um, a sense of, what was the word, um, what do they call it? You know, respect, not respectability, but you know what I'm talking about. Gives you this sense of being someone who is successful and all this stuff. There's only one problem. It's fake. 
So you're buying this illusion that you are somebody who gets a lot of views and stuff like that. And that is kind of like what I think trips people up. And it's the ego. The ego doesn't want to start from scratch, from, you know, having to be humble. They want to be uh, popular right away. And so if you're willing to start wherever you are and be grateful for whatever little successes come your way, and they may be very uh, small, but they're exhilarating, you can be proud of yourself for very humble accomplishments if you if you have that awareness but it's sad when people don't value the little things and they just want to start you know at the top of the heap okay so that's what that card represents is the ability to to appreciate the the journey and not just you know want to cut to the chase okay in the past position we have the Eight of Wands. And before I was interpreting this as the Eight of Swords, which is a totally different context. The Eight of Wands is actually a rapid fire type of, um, it's like a breakthrough that I would say that allows you to, maybe something was kind of stagnant or just quiet. And then all of a sudden you start to talk to, to, to someone uh, maybe it's with something that you're trying to do, maybe it's networking, and you're just getting very excited by the potential of something that you're trying to get off the ground. And I, as I was saying, because this is the spiritual message, which is the Ace of Wands, and isn't this a beautiful depiction? I love these pen and ink drawings of this deck. Because the Ace of Wands, you see how they have all that radiating light, and that is, I think, showing the wands, which is, which is a fire element, and how that affects us energetically. Because the Ace of Wands is about starting something that you have a strong passion for. And I think it is so important that when you have, uh, when you're living your life, that you have a passion or multiple passions that you're not just a zombie going through the motions, getting up in the morning, going to work, coming home, blah, 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 and that, you know, you can do uh, things over and over again, but still ha ha retain passion. I'm not saying that you have to be like doing random things at random times every day, but the idea that you're on automatic, that's the problem. Aquarius is an air sign, so you may kind of even distrust passion and think it's too too like um, strong in emotion. You may be more of a cool cucumber who likes to view everything in a dispassionate way. And actually uh, the word dispassionate is something that I've seen associated with uh, meditation, okay? Uh, probably especially Buddhism. And I think a lot of air signs like Aquarius uh, really take to Buddhism like a duck to water because there is this detachment that is celebrated. But I, maybe it's because I'm a fire sign, I really believe in, in passion as a sustaining force in your life. And it doesn't have to be where you're manic about it, but just things that really make your heart sing, that you feel very strongly about and that you want to bring into the world. So whether it's a creative project, whether it's, your biz, like a business that you have, even if it's, like I said, with the Seven of Pentacles, starting very modestly on the side, but just starting wherever you are, it, I feel that it's so good to embrace things that make you happy. Um, because how many people really believe that they deserve to be happy? I, I would bet that most people would claim that they know that that is what the, they sh that is their birthright. But in practice, I bet you that many people do not fully embrace that. 
because a lot of people seem to think that the struggle is the real thing. And everything that is easy or fun is somehow not work. And maybe it isn't work. But you can make a living from it and have fun. You know, the puritanical mentality is what the life is suffering. We're all worms and we have to just, you know, hope that God will, you know, give us a time of day. So kind of turning those concepts on their ear, I think, is really good. Um, the What crosses you is, is represented by the Father of Swords, which I'm taking to be the King of Swords. And... Um, <laughs> I like this as the owl, you know. Ow owls always have that fierce look, you know. Um, the King of Swords, isn't it interesting that they use the term father? And, and this is because queens and, and uh, kings, as court cards, can literally be talking about, about parents, fathers and mothers. And um, when you think about the King of Swords in the challenged position, it's possible that you had a father, I mean, a, this could be a literal thing, where you had a father who did not approve of you, who was sarcastic towards you, who mocked your dreams. And th believe me, don't ever think that that does not have an influence on people going after what they want. I think that it, it totally does. And I just want to also present you this insight that I had recently because in addition, if you did have a parent, especially like a father or if, it's, if the mother was the authoritarian that was the head of the household, then that could be the mother too. Um, if you had a parent who discouraged you from doing the things that you love to do or who just kind of belittled your accomplishments in general, you may get the underlying or unconscious message that you're not allowed to be successful because the parent might feel threatened by it. If they um, do not feel that they have accomplished as much as they have, have wanted to accomplish, they may not want their child to. And I know that sounds like crazy and horrible, but it is what it is. I'm not saying that this is always going to be true, but you know that Human beings tend to compare themselves to other people, and a parent can can easily compare themselves to their child, especially if they came from a very, a much more disadvantaged uh, background than you did. They may already be envious and feel that you had much more opportunity than they did, and they resent that. Um, obviously, this is a dysfunctional situation, but I wanted to put that out there so that you learn to separate yourself from the messages that you may have received growing up because I don't even care if you're 40 years old or older you can still be dealing with this and I can tell you that it's it's like an amazing thing to get to be a certain age and you start the the, the curtain starts to get um, pulled back and you see the truth you see the, the man behind the curtain or the woman behind the curtain, and you realize that it was all just a big psyops, psychological operations done to you to discourage you from achieving your full potential. So don't, don't play the victim anymore if that's true for you. For other people, this could be somebody else in your life. This could be, a, and this person could be a narcissist now that I think about it, now that I've done this reading a second time. Because I, the King of Swords in reverse could be someone, um, could be a male with a strong air element, like you have an air element. So Aquarius, Libra, uh, Gemini. I think that if it's a Libra person, they may even talk out of both sides of their mouth, while Gemini can definitely do that too. If it's an Aquarius, they might have a streak of cruelty where they are able to just, but, you know, I could see Gemini doing this too, where they can just, like, say the vilest things to, to get inside your head. Um, air signs are genius at manipulating people mentally, okay? And that will affect you 
emotionally. Uh, that, that can easily affect you emotionally. So be careful if you have a toxic influence like this in your life because um, Aquarians may not m make the, the, um, the link between their sense of um, negative... Uh, negativity in their life and that other person. Obviously, you can't blame another person for your for your life at all in any way. But you, if you get away from people that are naysayers or just downright mentally abusive, that can do wonders to help you at least recover. You know what I mean? So, anyway, just that, just say that. And if this is a facet of you, it may be emotional blockage that you have a hard time finding that, that joy that is inherent and is our birthright. And again, that may relate to something from your family of origin, some traumatic event that happened and you have to get back and maybe have some kind of Reiki or something like that that dissolves energy blockages. Who knows? The, the advice or what's coming in is the Eight of um, pe Pentacles. And I just wanted to say that this is one of those cards where I was able to draw a connection to, you know, why this is a great depiction and a, an, an unusual and original depiction, ingenious depiction of the Eight of Pentacles. Because in my Morgan Greer deck, as well as the Rider Waite deck, there is this apprentice at the table hammering hard at work, um, trying to perfect their craft. And you see this spider at the center of this intricate web showing the person, <laughs> the person, that the spider was very deliberate in this creation. And they weren't doing a, a slipshod, like a shoddy type of job. And so this is telling you if you need more training or information to start a business, to um, as you're ascending in this thing that you're doing, go get it. Don't be too afraid to learn new things. Aquarius is a fixed sign, so there's that stubborn uh, stubbornness that's sometimes present. But here's another thing about Aquarius, and I wonder how many of you would agree. I also, I, I think that Aquarius is also known as being a know-it-all. And they can be kind of smug about all their knowledge. Well, you know what? There may be something that you're doing that you need, whoa, that you need more information about. And so don't be too um, puffed up with your intellect that you can't um, get more information or training if it's some certificate that you need. Go get it, and you will... I find that when you invest in something, even if it doesn't have a direct impact on your life, it's still... It's like you're putting it into the Cosmic Bank account, and it will pay off in some way eventually. Um, so don't ever think that any, any training is wasted or any classes or anything like that. It can be... You may meet someone, maybe you meet a professor or an instructor who can help you outside of the classroom. You never know. So two cards came out when I got the outcome. One of them is the Daughter of Wands, and this is, would be the Page of Wands. This is about hearing some great news. You see, that doesn't that look like a, uh, an eight? I'll have, to, I'll have to see in the booklet if they really are trying to hint at the number eight, because pages are kind of like aces, where it could be like a beginning of some some project that's a, exciting to you. But it can be because it is pages. It could be like hearing a message. I'm gonna just like look it up really quickly because I wanna see if they even mention um, messages for this particular. Hmm. They don't say anything. Hmm. 
I have a feeling that they are using other interpretations as well. But um, if this is corresponding with the Page of Wands, and that tends to bring messages that are good news for you, and they could relate to career matters. Alongside of it, I got the Ten of Wands. So if you have a day job that is really uh, sucking the life out of you, this card could be saying that you are feeling burdened, you're feeling like you're about to just um, pass out. You may be realizing that you've been taken advantage of, that uh, you're doing the work of two people, and that it's not your responsibility. And so that will propel you forward into wa really wanting to make any kind of side business successful. So use that sense of weariness to help you to, to light a fire under you, pardon the pun, because wands connect with fire, you know, and really get you going. And so hopefully that can um, make your dreams come true even quicker. But just in general, you may have to tell somebody in a position of authority, that's not my job. Um, and the other thing, too, is in your personal life, if somebody's trying to get you to do everything, you may have to delegate and you may have to be and you have to be very firm about it, that you are not you can't be apologetic. So um, that could be that could simply be, you know, in one of my books, it calls it the burden of success. So. It's like kind of like, well, it's something that is, is really working out for you, but in the short term, you have to work very hard because even the Eight of Pentacles can indicate that. So now we're going to move on to these uh, Akashic Tarot cards. One of them is the King. I did get two of those too, so I'm going to read both of those really quick. You're going to get probably a longer reading than everybody else. Aquarius, so um, I did, I'm not like a big fan of reading from the booklet, but I have no other choice because these cards are totally different than what I'm used to. Maybe one day I'll know exactly what it means and I don't have to read through the whole thing. Because, you know, it does seem a little bit artificial to me, but... And it's not that easy to find these... <laughs> these... Uh, depictions here. Let me see. Oh my gosh. Okay. King of Roses. And there's another king, by the way. This card shows a man holding two roses, a red and a white, demonstrating a balance of passion and purity. At his feet are the yellow roses of healing and creativity. This is a king of love, a man who is balanced and well-rounded. When he appears in your reading, in your spread, it indicates that a potential union could be at hand, either in friendship, business, or even romance. Whether this is a new relationship or the blossoming of an old one, this man brings tender-hearted and thoughtful support. He is also someone who could be helpful in your personal life, especially where home and fa or family issues are concerned. Whether the King of Roses is you or another man, the role of husband or father is now opening to create a happy home and family. This card also lets you know that you are ready to stand up for yourself and take loving but considered action on your own behalf. It is a time of increasing love and compassion, which always starts within. Well, that's nice. And I'm particularly um, intrigued by this card, which is I've never pulled before. It's called One of Forces Ak the Akashic Field. I love that, the color of that. I really need to read this booklet to find out, you know, about the different, um, like what forces means and all that stuff. Ugh, I'm just, it's just so... Navigating this book is the only thing that's a little bit challenging. Okay. And by the way, the Akashic Records, in case somebody doesn't know what that is, um, I call it the spiritual internet. So 
every, I think in Christianity they might call it the book of records. Everything that we have ever done or ever will do imprinted on the cosmic hard drive. And this is something that, you know, when psychics kind of go back and they tap into what has come before, they're, they're opening the Akashic records, in other words. So um, we might not remember everything from our soul's journey through different lifetimes, but the Akashic records does that. Like the Akashic field, the aurora borealis flows with energy and brilliance as charged particles from the sun interact with atoms in the Earth's atmosphere. The 93 miles from the sun to Earth is nothing compared to the limitless consciousness of the Akashic field. All information, power, energy, and experiences vibrate within this realm of unending truth and possibility, and every bit of it can be yours. Receiving this card upright tells you that amazing opportunities abound at this time. You can increase and accelerate the experience by opening the doors to the Akashic Records. Your life force energy resonates with universal synchronicity now so that you can explore the records and receive exactly the information that you need and the energy that can help. Engage in this pursuit with a conscious focus. Write your intentions and ask for inspiration. Meditate on the Akashic field and visualize your goals. The universe is ready and willing to align with your heartfelt desires, and now it is the time to make it happen. So, you know, alongside of that um, new moon, uh, that solar eclipse in your sign, uh, particularly February is a great time to plant seeds of intention in all areas of your life. And um, so that's pretty cool. And as I said, I, you know, I can't remember if I said this in this reading. I know I said it in the last reading, but I mentioned about the, um, this card being connected to Reiki and uh, Aquarius being very uh, psychic sign. Quan Yin is associated with Reiki energy. So just um, if you've been possibly wanting to be an energy healer, this might be talking about that. Okay, let me... Okay, it says, Care and compassion. Choose to be love. Do what is right for everyone involved. Offer a helping hand. Quan Yin, sometimes, you know, instead of Q-U-A-N, it's K-U-A-N, is a bodhisattva, Buddha-like being, and the goddess of mercy, compassion, and love. Though she is acknowledged in Buddhism and the traditions of China, she goes beyond religion and warms the hearts of all who call on her. She has a strong connection to healing energy, particularly Reiki, and encourages people to offer care, forgiveness, and compassion. Um, to themselves and others. Compassion is about recognizing the spirit in others. It's about seeing that they come from the same source as you do. And this is the extended message. First of all, the keepers of the light want to acknowledge all the service and commitment you have offered to others. You are all love. If you are finding it difficult with anyone at the moment, the best way you can move forward is to go beyond wanting to understand why or how they are the way that they are. Just move beyond their behavior, mistakes, and challenges. This card brings a message of friendship and care, helping you see that those around you do have the best intentions, even if it, all, it doesn't always seem that way. Move into compassion and develop a greater understanding. This will elevate your spirit and connection to love. So um, that is one of those things that I think all of us have to have to really um, embrace that sometimes we feel this sense of alienation from others and we think that they are so different from us. I know <laughs> sometimes a person says something, I'll, I'll hear them say it and I'll say, wow, they think like that too, just like me. 
And then I think to myself, why would I ever doubt that they would? But I am so much in my own, on my own trip, in my own head, that, and I'm not an Aquarius, I'm a Sagittarian, but it's that same principle of like, you know, being so detached from other people's, their own hearts sometimes that you don't quite realize that we're all, um, we all basically want the same things. And um, some people don't do things in a skillful way, but we can still have compassion for them regardless. Okay, Aquarius, I hope that you enjoyed this. And if you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below. My website is rainandmoonastrology.com. Happy solar return and um, enjoy the eclipse in your sign. Take care. Bye.